means Judah means a leading tribe in Israel. Uh, that's where David, the king, is the leader of the tribe. That's why God chose uh, Judah as a leading tribe to lead the children of Israel. That's where Solomon was born in. That's where all the prophets, not even so much the priests, but they were from the, the priests were from the Levites. So this is what God made a choice among Israel, Judah, to be the leading tribe. And he sent his servant, Jeremiah, because there were things that was going on in Judea. That is in Jerusalem, we're in King, King David's uh, city, uh, where they were living in. And the thing I would like us to remember is this, that they are God's people. He make a choice among the, the nations of the earth. I think it's in Exodus, he said, you have I loved among the nations of the earth and put my presence among you. Put my words among you. And I want you to understand. So I want us to incorporate these things. But when the Lord used Jeremiah, he said, I am going to send Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the present day Babylon, is the present day Iraq that we are living in now. So the man that was there as ruler, Nebuchadnezzar, God raised him up. And he said, I'm going to take all the nation, the Ammon nation, close to Israel, all, uh, uh, all those nations from the north, and bring them down to Babylon. And when he took them, he raided the temple. And when he raided the temple, he took out all the vessels of gold and silver that they were using there. And he brought them down to Babylon. And when he brought them down, to Babylon. Remember, God allowed this to happen to Israel. And so much more with us today. This should speak to us in a full understanding. Being children of God, we have to be careful because this is a lesson that is given a time that we should understand. When God made up his mind to do something, if he said, I'm going to finish with you, you're finished. Because this is a God, don't lie, and he kept his word to a thousand generations. So when he spoke to the Jewish people, I said, I'm going to send you to Babylon. And when you go to Babylon, you're going to stay there for 70 years. He said, plant fields, married wives. Have children because you're not going back to Jerusalem for a while. And after 70 years were done, then he smiled on them a little bit. If you take the book of Nehemiah and Ezra and read and you see where the walls were broken down. And they want to send back, the, uh, the Jews want to have the burden to go back and build the walls of Jerusalem again. So this is what happened to Israel at the time, and why I brought this forth is to show how God, step by step, warning, counseling, encouraging, and showing his people. I didn't say anybody else, you know, I said his people. And when he showed his people what they are not doing or what they should be doing, he made a decision. He put the nation of Israel, they have the, the, the nation for 1,500 years. And after that, they start to make an havoc. They follow the fancies of the world. And all these the flamboyancy that goes on into the world. And they bring it on into the, the worship of the Almighty God. So, this is a warning for church too also. We have to, and children of God, we have to be careful on what we do. Now, let us step over into, um, this is what the, the, the Nebuchadnezzar did. Take them into Babylon. We are going to step over into. Jeremiah 25, 1 to 9. Uh, yeah, 1 to 9. So, we are going to step over into Daniel chapter 1. Why I'm going step by step 
and using the old covenant and come on over into the new is because God uses things to happen and he makes things to happen for a reason. And see when they were gone over into into um into uh, uh Babylon chapter one tells us what happened in the very very first uh, verse in chapter one tells us what really happened. On the third year of the reign of Jehoiah king, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Circle it around. God gave him the authority to. God allowed him to. And God used him to circle Jerusalem, the place that the Jewish people are living because of their idol worshiping, because of their deeds of evil that they are doing. And by so doing, God gave them over to serve the king of Babylon. And I must point out this part here to us that are listening to me, is this was not a Gentile ruling at the time when he had the Jews was going on. But from this moment, King Nebuchadnezzar took the Jewish people into Babylon, they have not gone back. They have not gone back to have their own government. Never gone back up to this day. Up to this very day, the Jewish people did not have their self-government again. So as children of God, we have to uh, take a stock of ourselves. When we can study the scriptures and using and getting an understanding from the word of God, how we as God's people have to live and how we have to conduct ourselves and maintain the godly principles that he has brought us into. It's very important to every child of God and that we will be able to have a proper thinking power and a right attitude to, towards God, the first thing, and then to our fellow man, second. And by so doing, there will be a blessing that will follow us today. What the Jewish people did, we learned from them. We understand what went on. We saw what went on. We had the proof. And we call this uh, in the big flamboyant word, historicity of the Jews. Okay? That means that history and it, un it unchanged facts what the Jews went through. And by so doing, Daniel told us in that year when they came over and took everything into uh, Babylon. Now, I'm going over to chapter, why I am doing this, and going over, I'm using little pieces here and little pieces there because there's a, a lot to cover. So I am going over chapter uh, two in Babylon. And, um, Daniel, sorry. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's dream came where with his spirit was troubled and his, sheep, his sleep broke from him. You see what God does, although he took the Jews into Babylon, God want to do a work on Nebuchadnezzar. And he gave him a dream, but he could not remember the dream. God is a God of, uh, of many things. And while he gave him the dream, his spirit broke from him because he had never seen such a, a thing in his life. And when his spirit broke from him, he started to ask the magician what happened. They couldn't have said anything. You see, the things of God, it takes God, man. To reveal the things of God to God's people. It don't take anybody. It takes the it takes the person of God that God called, chose for the time to show things unto God's people that they can understand. And here it is when he got the when he got the dream and he want to destroy the men of Babylon as well as the, 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 the wise men of Israel. 
Daniel said to him, give us time and we will, we will get through to it and we will see what's happening here. And in the night vision, it was revealed. I know that you heard that story preached to you many times uh, in, in the church of God. It was revealed unto him. And it was revealed unto Daniel. Daniel started to explain what the dream was. And he listened attentively. And while he listened, um, he said, now I am going to give you the interpretation. He said, the God of heaven, the God of heaven, verse 28, but there is a God in heaven that reveal its secrets and make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the later days the dream and the vision of the, uh, thy head upon thy bed are these. And Daniel, the wiser servant of God, took the vision, opened it up, and explained it. When he explained it, and as thou, O king, thy thought came unto thee on thy bed. And in verse 31, I said, O oh, king, saw that, behold, a great image. And this great image, whose brightness was an excellent, stood before thee. And from uh, before thee, it was terrible. And the image is this. It was of, the head was of fine gold. The breast and arms of silver and belly. And tie of brass, and his legs of, and his legs of uh, iron, and feet part of iron, and feet part of clay. Now that is a complete expression of an image, or as a human would stand, and you show the head of gold. Now, Daniel showed King Nebuchadnezzar. And let him know that God had made him the head of gold. Why the head of gold? Why not be goodness to the head of gold? Because God, I say God, the Lord Jesus Christ and his father decide to change the things and letting the Jews know I can use anybody who I want to use. I can use anybody when I choose to use. And while God used Nebuchadnezzar and said, you are the head of gold. And being the head of gold, I start with you, Nebuchadnezzar, to show you you are the head of gold. And while God make known unto him, he is the head of gold. He's going to go through a process. Not because God made him the head of gold. I want you to, to pay attention to this expression that I'm giving. That gold is special. That gold is pure gold. And the God in heaven was going to deal with the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. When he was dealing with the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar to show him that God is God in heaven and earth and anywhere he goes, he's God. And when he became animals and heat the grass, God allowed that to happen to him, to break his spirit. And when God broke Nebuchadnezzar's spirit and showed him that he is God. He lift up his eyes unto heaven and worship the Lord. So when God do call someone, he makes sure the first thing he does, he break your spirit. He brings you down. He may give your spirit a humbleness and cause you to see yourself. And he get, in the midst of it, he give you comfort. To let you understand that he is God. And if he calls you to do something, he's going to use you to his glory. But first of all, he has to work. 
on you and make you to be how. And this is what God did for Nebuchadnezzar. He brought him down. He humbled him and set him at the place. And before Nebuchadnezzar died, he extolled or exalted the name of God Almighty. And here it is. When, when um, uh, let us look at verse, verse um, 45 in, the, in chapter uh, 2. For, uh, for as much as that the stone cut out of the mountain, yes, yes, out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron. You see what God does? The gold that was standing up. You see, notice here when Daniel give him, give him uh, give uh, to Nebuchadnezzar this interpretation. First of all, he said he's the head of gold. Secondly, the, the arms and the breasts of silver. The belly and thigh of brass. And his feet of miry clay and the toes coming down. But see what happened here. Daniel turned it around now. And he said... For as the iron and brass and the clay, you see, and he, let me get it properly here. My glass is not too good today. Um, and it is stone cut off the mountain with our hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, and the clay, the silver, and the gold. You see? The great God hath made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Now, look at what I just read. You notice, first of all, he made him a head of gold, and he showed him what's coming down. The rest that's coming down is inferior to Nebuchadnezzar. Why did God do this? God, in his mercy and his understanding and his foreknowledge, turned from the Jews and allowed the Gentiles to take over and rule and reign. My God, my spirit is, 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 is getting there. My spirit is getting hypo. And rule the rest of of the world, why you see Christianity spread so much is Gentile time. Mm -hmm. God's using the Gentile. I hope you can see this. I hope you can get the revelation. I hope it can really hit your spirit, man. God changed things to show the Gentile, show the Jews who he is. And no matter how a man is great, he can't greater than God. Amen. My God, my spirit is hypo. Oy. Oy, I have to cool it. So, what I want to point out again and give you an understanding. He said the iron, the brass, and the clay is the inferior part. And afterwards, Daniel explained down to the silver and the gold. Because, you know why? Because it is showing where God is going to take over at the iron, clay, and the brass. But the Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, is gone. You're getting me? It's gone. The silver and the brass is gone. So what is left now is going to be the iron and the mix with the miry clay. That's where God is going to hit. Because the consecutiveness of that image, you know what's the image? The spirituality. The spirituality of the world. 
the spirituality of the, the governing Gentile government that it's going to give over to. To show how inferior God starts with it good, but it's coming down to an end that is so inferior. And this is where God is going to finally hit the Gentile ruling on the face of the earth. You heard what I'm saying? I'm not talking the children of God, you know. I'm talking the, 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 the rulers of the earth. So the Jews don't have a self-government. Now, let me take my time. I'm going over uh, to uh, chapter uh, 2. There is a, a, a section there. Okay, let me go over to Revelation Revelation chapter 6. Remember what I was pointing out to you. And uh, uh, what I should have uh, pointed out to you. It says there's a stone cut out of the mountain. Without hands and broken pieces. The stone there is Christ. The stone there is the power of God. The stone there is God taking over. So in other words, it's going to hit the Gentile government. Canada, England, United States, Germany, Russia, Australia, small island, government. And the, in the scripture, the, 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 the hills that you see, it speaks of a small island. The government of big, big country, they call it mountains. So this is what is going to. So let us go to Revelation chapter, chapter six. While I jump like this, is to build our mind where the scripture want to take us, and let us understand because this section of the scripture here is coming down to the um, is coming over and coming down to the uh. The Gentile is the Gentile ruling is still going on right now. But this is coming down to the totem pole of uh, what's going on. Now what is totem pole? The the end of everything. The end of everything. So let us look at Revelation chapter six from verse one. Uh, verse one and I saw a lamb. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him had a, a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering unto conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast come and see. And there went out another horse, red. I must say to you and say to us here, this part of the scripture here, you notice, I want to point it out. You notice this part of the scripture. It said a crown was given unto him. And this crown is an authority. Was given unto him. And he should go out with a bow, no harrow. There is no nothing to, to kill anything. But this is diplomacy. This book is a book of symbols. It's diplomacy. And this what's going on here in the book of Revelation, I hope we can understand it's going to be operating in the human, it's by a human being, and it uses the horse. That means his authority and the crown and his diplomacy with a bow without an arrow. Jesus do not 
treat people like this. What God is, he show you what he is, and you know what he is and what he will do. And he do not use a born heart to strike. He use the spirit of his mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the difference with our God. So here it is. It's telling us it was given unto him. Now, this, what was given unto this man, conquering unto conquer. You see, come from with a white horse. You notice it? The white horse, it looks good and real. But it changes to red horse. Hmm. Don't fool yourself. The devil don't change. He only changed clothes. So in other words, he changed dispensation, put on different kind of thing in dispensation. So that's why the children of God have to be wise and know what they are doing. Not everything that speak in tongues you can run to. Not everybody that can say they are, they, 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 I'm saying you can, you got to try the spirit. Discernment is going to be necessary in every child of God's life. Hmm. Discernment. So we all, not some, we all have to pray for discernment. And so at the end here, it's coming down to the end. And this man is conquering unto conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, he saw the red horse. And when he come down on it, when he opened another seal, and power was given unto him that should take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and they be given unto him a great, a great sword. Now, this is telling us things is going to come down. This is coming down to the feet and the toes. And this is what's going to happen. From Nebuchadnezzar coming down, God is working. Working and he's always be working. And before Christ come back, this world is going to be under destruction. Man time is coming to an end. The ungodliness is going to come to an end. Because remember, I would like to, to show you. Can you go back with me in Daniel? One minute, please. Can you go back with me in Daniel? I'll show you one scripture. And this, this scripture, when I show you this scripture, Daniel saw. Daniel saw what was going to happen at the end of everything. Uh, Daniel chapter... Chapter, I'm just going to give you one scripture. Let me see if I find it here. Oh, yes. It's going to be Daniel chapter 7. Chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. And uh, from verse, uh, you got it? If you got it, Daniel chapter 7. Okay, and behold, and uh, verse 11, uh, be, uh, behold then, because of the voice of a great uh, uh, word, which the horn spake, and behold, even till the, the beast was slain, and his body given to the, the burning flame, now concerning the rest of the beast, and had their dominion taken away, Yet their lives were prolonged for a, a season and a time. Now, while I'm reading this scripture here, I do not know how much of you have studied history. I don't know how much you have known history, but I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Now, when Nebuchadnezzar got his power and his authority, after Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar with his son start to drink uh, uh, out of the, the vessels of gold and God wiped him out. Me and me and take you, Pharisee. God wiped him out. They take the, the Medes and the Persian came and, they, and after that the, the, the Greek came with Alexander the Great and wiped them out. 
And then after that came pagan Rome. Pagan Rome came. And here it is. There is a little portion here. I want you to look at the scripture. I want you to look at the verse 11 again. Behold, because of the, the voice of a great a word which the, the, the horn spake, and I beheld even till it is the beast was slain and his body given to the burning uh, flame. Now concerning the rest of the, the host, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So in other words, these nation that has gone on before, the, the dominion was taken away from them and vanished. But there is another, the beast that came up in the end. The brass came up in the end. And the verse 12 tell us, concerning the rest of the beast is still alive. The rest of the beast is still alive. And this is where we are today. The beast is alive in our day. Hmm. So in other words, the ungodly beast is alive in our day. We're not talking about the children of God. We're talking about the ungodly system. So here it is. And his dominion <laughs> was taken, yet lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like unto the Son of Man, that is Christ. You see, Daniel got the vision about the Lord Jesus himself before we get to learn of him. And when he got the vision, he told the king what was going to happen. And while the cloud of heaven and, uh, came to the ancient of days, and they brought him before him, the ancients of days, that is his father, God the Father, Jehovah God. And they brought the son before him. Daniel is explaining some things that he have never, the vision, it startled his mind because God took his spirit and showed him what's going to happen. So here it is. And there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all the people, nation and language should serve him and his dominion and his everlasting kingdom which shall not pass away and is the and his kingdom that which shall be shall not be destroyed you see so here it is this scripture is showing us that god is going to take over and daniel saw it god at the end of everything god's going to take over and Daniel saw it and showed it to the king. And when he saw these things, that man couldn't stand, stand straight up before Daniel. He, he fell flat in his face. There's no way, none of us, the presence of God hit us. We are going to stand up. Now, we are going to come under his, uh, his submission unto him. And in verse... Verse... Uh, uh, verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of uh, the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him that is speaking of the coming i'm going to use a word here you can take your dictionary and look for it. It is speaking of the coming theocracy. Theo. Theo. Are you in Daniel? Yes, I'm in Daniel. The verse 27. I read to you verse uh, 15, uh, 13, 14, and 27. So the coming kingdom, right? Yes. 
This is a theocratical ruling. Means God ruling. God takes over. Got to know. Got to know. God's ruling. Amen. So this uh, white horse that came on the scene. Take the name back Revelation. Back over to Revelation chapter six. And you can read it for yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Read it for yourself. And you will see. So the white horse signifies? The white horse signifies riding. Riding, the riding on a white horse is to show it's a spiritual, it's a, a religious. The white horse there is religious, a deceptive religious organization religious organization a group of people people that believe in this and he had a, a crown upon his, his the crown is an authority to do what he's doing now we are going to go to so before so when when it turns red the same white horse turns red. turns red and it turns black red is as blood it's killing and it's going to take place. Sorry. And black becomes to a death. People that don't believe in their religion. So this is going to be religious. You talk about the Muslim religious war with the Jews. <laughs> this is going to be worse. This is going to be worse. So now. Let us go to Revelation 13. Are you there? Touching off a little bit here. Amen. Okay. Revelation 13 speaks of the man said uh, he stand upon his uh, John, that is John, brother John, and he stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, verse 1. Verse 1 there, uh, it is speaking of the sea there is speaking of humanity. The sea is humanity, figurative, metaphoric method. Okay? The beast rise up out of humanity. And having seven heads and, and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. This is an authority that uh, was going to be given to the man of sin. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a, a, of a, a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a, of a lion. And the dragon gave him the power and his seat and great authority. Now, that dragon there is our arch enemy that fighting every child of God that caused the human being to come under the curse. The dark, the dog kingdom to come under the curse. The animal kingdom come under the curse. The tree, the tree kingdom on the earth come under the curse. That's why the trees died with disease. The fishes in the sea and all kind of things. He gave the power to him. And I saw one like a, his head was as it wounded to death. And his wounded, when his wounded head did heal on the world, wonder after the beast. Now, listen, I'm going to stop here and explain something to us. History coming down. When pagan Rome took, took over, went to march into Jerusalem. But even before that, 
uh, there is a man uh, in by the name of Antiochus of Epiphanes went over and took Jerusalem and when he started to govern that brass that took over in Jerusalem and when they took over Jerusalem he brought from Idomia if you read about King Herod he King Herod was not a Jew King Herod was a uh, was uh, Esau descendants and Esau is not among the children of Israel is the brother of Jacob but he took his own way and gone and joined with Ishmael so Herod was taken and bring him over into Israel and sit as a king you see but Herod is gonna have a time that God is going to destroy him and that's exactly what happened because you know he was eaten of worms so here it is and he said his head uh, was uh, healed now when pagan Rome took over and fought down Jerusalem in AD 70 this is history now and uh, you I don't know if you ever read the book Fox's book of murder it gives you a lot of history and when they took over and tear down the, the, the temple and they put light the temple with fire and set gutter to catch the gold and the silver that's coming out and they run into their chariots and they take it and bring it over into Rome in the basement and there's a Pope that buried it in some of the gold here they call it Pope um, Innocent covered over in all gold, in all gold. That is his, his burial. So here it is. That beast. That the, the revelation is talking about. He was wounded. Where he was wounded. He was wounded when Martin Luther. Uh, not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther in Wittenberg, Germany. Tyndale, Radcliffe, Jerome. And all those men. That came on the scene. And when the Protestant movement went on, because the pagan Rome gradually moved on to papal Rome. And when it, uh, the, 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 the problems start there, these persecutions start. That's why you see they have um, under Rome, under Rome there, there are places that dig underground. People have to go underground to serve God because of the persecution that hit them in Europe at those times. So for his book of martyr, he, he wrote concerning all these things and established it. I read a book that they call it Romanism. I don't think you can get that book anymore. And so this is what happened. That the wound that the wound that, that, that beast got, it was wounded. That's why you see liberation can come to the Christian people today. And when all people from uh, from uh, Europe went over to United States of America came to Canada a lot of them flee persecution when they came over on the, the Mayflower and they went we are the natives of the Indians in United States of America they did not fight those people those people they serve God over there because when they flee persecution they find a, a place of refuge is when the other people come over they started to fight the Indians but when the Mayflower came over, those people serving God, the Indians and they were working together. They taught them how to live off the land. You see? So this is what, what really went on. Persecution. There's a lot of people, sweat and blood, bring this word of God to, to, to God's children. Because Tyndale, when he was dead, coming from a meeting, the rainstorm reached him. And when the rainstorm reached him, he catch a cold, a bad cold, and he died. And when pagan Rome found out that he died, they seek for his grave and pull up his arm, his bones, and burn it. There's so much hatred because when they took the word of God, it was chained that nobody could get it. Martin Luther got it and take it out and started to preach the just shall live by faith. That's the white man, eh? Martin Luther King, that, that man there. Uh, his story. See, so this is what history tells us. So what you see, the deadly wound that was healed, it is healing again. 
to come on the scene. Look at the, uh, what revelation. And I saw the head that was wounded to death. But it was not dead. No, it's not dead. The system is still alive. God is hard to say these things, but believe it, it is true. The system is still alive. The same beast of Revelation 6 is the same thing in Revelation 13. Coming up. The man of sin. Paul speak of the man of sin. I think he's in, is it Thessalonian? Yes, they speak of the, the man of sin. A time will come, there will be a, a great falling away. And the man of sin is going to be revealed. Whom the Lord shall destroy with the brightness of his coming and the spirit of his mouth. So, in Revelation 6, let us go to Revelation 19. Um, Revelation 19, I'm showing you, and I'm showing us, the white horse in Revelation 6 and the Revelation 19 is two different white horse riders. Two. You see, what the thing is this, everything that God have, the devil tried to substitute it. You listen, you listen careful. Everything that God does, the enemy always try to substitute it and make a counterfeit. You see what happened? But God's people must be wise. I, I think it's Uzi. I said my people is destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So here it is in Revelation 19. Uh, and verse 11 said, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon is called faithful and true. And in righteousness he did judge and make war. So in other words, our Lord Jesus is going to come back riding on a white horse to make war. Not making war with us, his people. But he's going to make war with the beast and his system. You see, he's coming with on a white horse, riding on a white horse to make war. And his eye was a flame of fire, and his uh, head wore many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. That's what Christ is. His name, you see, our Christ, our God, reveal himself straight up of what he is. He did not come on a backdoor deal. He revealed exactly his. He came and he reminded his people, coming on a white horse. He showed you the evil that's coming before. And he coming after to destroy to kill. And he's going to put down completely. Annihilated. The system of this world. And revive God's people. And took back. Forcefully interject his authority on the face of the earth. And the armies which are in heaven. Followed him. Upon a white horse, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth went forth a sharp sword, that which it he should smite the nation, and he shall rule over them with a rod of iron and he
with a rod of iron and he travail it in the in the, the, the wine he travail in the wine press uh, the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. So in other words, there's going to be death when he comes back to the ungodly systems. That's on the face of the earth. And don't worry yourself, children of God, you will be covered on the wings of the Almighty. Amen. You will be covered. And uh, I do not know if I can give you uh, this is scripture here concerning the child, the protection for the children of God. I don't know if I can uh, get it to give it to you, the children of God. And those people that coming back with him upon white horses is the raptured saints. You hear me? You hear me good? The raptured saints, the bride of Christ. And there are many ways uh, they're going to come. Many ways. Um, you know, while I'm talking this, I, I pray and I trust God that it will reach your heart. I know it's a lot of scripture. And I know a lot of jump around in the Bible. But don't don't question it do like what mary did ponder these things in your heart and in time you can read it for yourself and in time god will open your mind and show you and let you understand just like how christ came from the dead again and opened the mind of his disciples on the road to emmaus I said, didn't our heart burn within us? And show them what the Christ must go through and then rise again. So here it is. There are some new things that we are getting into. Ask the Lord to touch your mind and say, Lord, don't let me question your word, but hope on my mind and fuse them words and the understanding in my spirit, man.